Alright, so right here's the, like the mixer screen. This is just so it's just playing back the. Uh, Pretty much all the audio, it's like the the drums that I had already <coughs> recorded, so. Yeah. And for each of the um, channels that you have, you, pretty much this is how you get to, you can use this as a playback device as well, so. You can go in and then just find the recording that you made and then throw it out into the mixer screen like you see here. Um, yeah, for some reason, I don't know, you can only bring it back so far before, it, yeah, it only goes back to the beginning. Like, you can get it like five minutes into something, even if it's an hour long, say, and it won't. It only lets you go start either at the beginning and play all the way through or um, only go up to five minutes into it. Yeah, and then these are all the uh, takes. Or, yeah, basically every, every single take is a different recording of something. And then, um, oh yeah, this is the edit target screen. So you're going to have to go to the edit target to go to select to play it on the mixer. And then you choose your import location, which is happening right now. Export would be putting, go in reverse. So if I wanted to take something already onto the computer and put it onto multi-track, this would be that, uh, and then, but right now the source is the. It's called the Fat, the Fat Thirty Two Disc, and that's the hard drive that is. Uh, it'll sync it to once you plug it in. It, that's what it'll, it's now called. It'll sync to that name. So you can choose whatever source, and then your. Um, the content destination so again like what I'm doing right now is just going trying to get pre already recorded stuff onto my computer so from the E drive fat 32 to destination my computer and I'm just selecting all the things that I want to have on my computer from the hard drive import yeah and then sometimes I mean the most it's ever took was like maybe 10 minutes but that's like that's for over an hour worth of stuff and I guess it depends on how many channels you have And the next step would just be going on to Ableton Live, where I'm then going to import the audio files that I just ripped off of the hard drive onto the digital audio workstation. And from there, it's now it's saved in more than one location and I can also just start a project and then from this from here I can do whatever I want with it I just use this as um a big 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 uh recorder really because well you'll see like I'm pretty sure this is the um the drum files page. I have everything. Like I got drum sounds on one page. I got bass sounds on one page. I got uh, guitar sounds on one page, and then just other various projects all on one page. 
Yeah, which you see like right here. See, yeah, like a couple of my songs, and then just a couple other like other people that we worked with, and then yeah, ongoing projects. So this is the drums, and like what I mean about the big recorder is that I mean it's just hours and hours of clips of just you know me just having recording myself playing drums and just working with drum sounds in general like this is the last thing I just saw the thing about Ableton Live or the version I'm using is you only get 8 tracks and uh it's either that or pay like 100 bucks to get 16 tracks but honestly I just keep I just keep mixing down and uh so this is really all i need and i go to preferences select uh, i wanted to use the u-track 24 as an interface so not only is it a usb recorder but it's an interface and a playback device and uh here i'm just selecting the uh, my inputs i usually do it like this i usually have like a stereo input and then the rest model inputs or whatever, just basically whatever works. And then the outputs, I just like to do everything on different ins and outs. So on my inputs, I had one through, you know, one through eight or whatever. And then uh, I could just, I just like to choose different outputs. That way there's no possible issue of like a feedback loop. Because it just makes something, sometimes it's cool, sometimes it's just kind of not. But and I just use uh, 44 one because it's CD quality. It's all you really need. Mm. And um, like one thing I do have to probably work on better is organization. So when I drop things in, they're not. It's not always labeled right. It's not always. I mean, sometimes it's labeled in the last thing I was doing. But I mean, either way, I just kind of just figure it out. But again, yeah, organization, yeah, I'm still working on that. Yeah, and then in order to find the files that you got off the uh, E drive, the FAT32, the disk, you got to go to your music, somatic, audio, and then it's going to be in the audio library you find the take and then you see that it has all the uh, channels available see I only used channels 4 through 8 oh actually 3 through 8 for this particular um one and um yeah there's a way to get them all to drop in at the same time um, that works, or you could just do one at a time like this, and, um, yeah, then I just line them up, so I'll, I'll put a, I'll put these to the grid, so that way they all start at the same time, yeah, and it might take a little bit for them to load, too, so also that's why I do it one at a time especially for longer longer audio files uh, some of them load faster than other ones uh, it's just a matter of at this point, everything I can work on things repeatedly. I can just keep it in the uh, able to live or send it back out and remix like hybrid style. Yeah, so right here, that's what I'm doing. I'm just setting up uh, the grid so that way they 